Hey everybody, it's me. Welcome back. It's story time. Alright guys, it's time to talk about a time when I had to learn to laugh at myself. Now, normally this story would be considered pretty traumatic, actually, for a lot of trans people. And in the moment, oh my god, it was horrifying. But it's important that, as trans dudes, we learn to laugh at situations like the one I'm about to describe to you. So, heading out to Hawaii, right? Flying from Vegas, McCarran to Honolulu. Everything was smooth, smooth sailing. And I remembered a story from Ty Turner in regards to TSA and kind of the lack of sensitivity in regards to trans people. They didn't understand what a binder was. So, heading out from Vegas, I figured I should probably not wear my Packer. I don't generally wear binders, usually a sports bra does well enough for me, and especially if I'm going to be sitting or walking for a long period of time. I don't want to restrict my chest cavity too much because I have a propensity to faint. So, I just had my sports bra, t-shirt, sweatpants, and everything else, including like my camera and my packer, were all in my little suitcase, which I sent through the scanner. Heading back from Hawaii, I seem to have forgotten that trans stuff is still relatively new. So heading back, I was wearing my Hawaiian t-shirt and my cargo shorts and my super flat, you know, sports bra. I think I had two sports bras on at the time. And my packer in my packing underwear. Something like this. So, spouse and I are heading through security, and he goes first, he goes through just fine, and all the stuff is going through the thing, and some lady gets in front of me and she goes, and then I go into the scanner and I'm like, spread, you know, arms above the head, and uh, it's a woman who's reading the scan, and I step out, and she says, we need you to wait here, we're gonna have to pat you down. I say, okay, no problem. I've got nothing on me, I have nothing in my pockets, I'm not even wearing my belt. And then she sends me over to a guy. And he says, okay, I'm gonna pat you down. Is there anything in your front pockets? And I said, no. He said, well, the scan showed that you've got something in the front of you, so what do you have in the front? He said, yeah, I need to know before I pat you down. And I said, I have my packer. And he looked at me kind of funny, and I said, if it's a big deal, I can just take it out for you. And he looked really confused, and I think he thought I said my pecker, um, because he really didn't seem to know what I was talking about. <laughs> so he's like, no, no, that's fine. I was like, no, seriously, like, I'll save you the trouble of having to pat me down. Like, I'll just take it out. I forgot to take it out before I went through here. It's probably not that big of a deal. So he's like, okay, fine, you want to take it out, you can take it out. And he's looking at me like I'm crazy. I reach in, pull it out, and he's, he's like, oh, oh my goodness, oh, well, she has to pat you down. <laughs> and I say, okay, and he says, this needs to go through the scanner. And he's trying not to look at it because, hello, it's like a penis. And... <laughs> And he, you know, he's like hiding it in his hands and he says, do you always travel like this? And of course, being me, I said, oh yeah, I travel like that all the time. It's never caused an issue until today. And he says, okay, you know, but of course that's not true. Um, that just kind of rolled off my tongue. And so the lady comes over and the guy puts my dick and balls in a little cup. And, and takes it to, to the, you know, through the scanner and so that it can pass through the, the thing that like x-rays through your stuff. 
internally I am dying inside. I'm, I've basically died, I'm dead, like, everybody's looking at my dick now. Strangers who are putting their stuff on the conveyor belt are like, what is that? And the guy who has to scan it runs it through once, makes a face, pulls it back, runs it through again, starts to laugh, calls his friends over, runs it through again, now everybody's having a laugh at it. And I've, you know, she's finished patting me down and I'm just waiting for it to pop out the other side of the conveyor belt so I can grab it and run because I've basically just, ugh, died inside. And this poor old lady, oh my god, she must have been like 80. She's gone through the scanner, she's waiting for her stuff to come out on the other side, her suitcase comes through, she, you know, reaches for it pulls it down, and then in between her luggage and the rest of her stuff in the bin comes my dick in this tiny little cup. She reaches for it and is like, oh, oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I know now that my dick's come through. I grab it and then I, you know, I take off. My spouse has already brought all the luggage over to the other side and, and put everything where it's supposed to go. But yeah, it was uh, pretty funny, pretty funny. At the moment, I was devastated. But it's important to laugh at stuff like that instead of panic or be upset because stuff like that's gonna happen all the time. You know, you're gonna get misgendered, people are going to be insensitive about the issue, and we can choose to either let every negative instance like that ruin our lives, or we can choose to take the high road, laugh about it, hopefully educate people that this isn't abnormal, and this is just a part of life for a lot of people, and uh, and just move on, because holding on to stuff like that really just makes you bitter toward the world and makes you sad, so yeah, that's that's my, my uh, TSA story. I don't really have anything else to talk about. So there you go. Um, if you've had a story like that, any any type of instance happen like that to you, you know, even if you're not trans, put it in the comments below. I want to hear it. I want to laugh about it. Let's all laugh about it together, and uh, and let it fade off into the past as a funny memory. Okay. Thank you guys for being amazing. I hope you're having an excellent week. And uh, sorry, I'm still a little bit congested from being sick, but I personally am doing a lot better. I'm feeling better. Emotionally, I am doing a little bit better. I'm sure I mentioned in every single video prior to this, I've had to put my dog down recently, so I've been pretty sad about that, but life is good. You know, I'm focusing on getting work done and focusing on, on healing myself physically and emotionally, and um, it's important that we all take time to do that. For me, Hawaii was that time, and unfortunately it was followed by such devastation that I'm having to sort of adjust myself and my schedule again. But thank you for watching. I hope you're having an excellent day, excellent week. I've already said that, I'm saying it again. Um, if you're not a part, if you're not a member of the Jackalote Tribe and you'd like to be, hit that button down below, subscribe. Give an antelope, it's antelope, what is it? Give a deerlope, it's, give a jackalope, it's antlers. If you're not already and you'd like to be, hit that button down below and subscribe become a member of the Jackalope Tribe and give a Jackalope its antlers. Um, of course, don't forget to like, comment, share, send to your friends, laugh about it with me, and, uh, I, will and I will see you next time here, Jackalope Tribe. This is the awkwardest ending ever. I've rehearsed it like 10 times. There's just no way to end this video, so peace.